Asians get hella lean, and I don't know why. The last question is like, what what do I do to get that sea bum look? Like, if you you all you have is your body, you don't have anybody else's body. I never look for any, anyone who didn't look kind of like what I could. Not necessarily what I could achieve, but like that looks similar to what I sure. had. What is up? Welcome back to the channel. I'm actually in Mike's studio, so thank you, Mike, for letting me use your studio to do my content on your property in your house. The hospitality has been great. Johnny, it's been great having you here, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Guys, we're going to talk about race and bodybuilding. What are the main, are there any differences? There's a bunch of rumors. Apparently, I can jump. Well, it doesn't really matter if I can jump in bodybuilding, but but there are all those rumors that black people can jump higher because they have extra fibers and longer shin bones and their skin just makes it easier to jump higher. I That's don't know. Dope. I love that. Is that? The extra fibers thing is, is BS, okay. but there are some differences between the races that are pertinent for sport performance, for sure, and pertinent for physical appearance and potential in bodybuilding. So to make this conversation simpler, we can split the world up into the three major races. There is, I'm trying to find out if I get canceled for these, uh, yeah. for these uh, names. They're actually the technical names. Yeah. Caucasoid, Mongoloid, and I don't even have to say it, but it starts with an N. Negroid. And of the three major races, now of course there's a, b a bunch of uh, more minor races. Caucasoid, yeah. Ca Caucasoid. It's, that sounds like a Godzilla in a porno it's movie. Such a Caucasoid. Oh, stop. All right. Um, there's definitely, uh, you know, folks that are various combinations of those. There are folks that are outside of that realm almost entirely. For example, the peoples of Oceania. Polynesians, etc. I don't really fit, fit neatly into any of those categories, but just to keep it simple, because a huge fraction of the world splits into some of those, we can talk about generally what has ended up being what the competitive landscape looks like, yeah. and also what we can observe about body structure differences, and also what is corroborated by some research. You know? yeah. I don't do a lot of research on this anymore because it's how you get canceled doing research like that. It's a strange world we live in, but uh, there's some good stuff out there. So a couple things to say. Um, about the three major races, so there's definitely body proportion differences. Yeah. Asians are technically the most cold adapted of all of the major races, so their bodies tend to have the largest ratios of torso size to limb size. So they have shorter limbs and bigger torsos for any given height on average. Very much on average, tons of exceptions. Um, the Caucasians, white, white folks as we call them, somewhere in the middle. Huge variation of course. And uh, then there are the folks of African ancestry that tend to be the most heat adapted, which means uh, they got a couple things going on. One of the things they have going on is they actually have smaller and shorter torsos and longer limbs relative to any given height. One of the reasons for that is like, if you have a big torso, it, core temperature goes up and it's really hard to, to regulate. Yeah. On the other hand, if we put someone who looks like a fucking spider into the North Pole, they're gonna die real soon. Yeah. Polar bears, little short little limbs, thick bodies, seals, same thing, penguins, same thing. So it applies to animals. Humans are animals, in yeah. fact. Yeah. And if you ever like visited Nigeria, you better be real good at uh, heat regulation because you're not gonna last. The shit is like 95 degrees and humid 24-7. Yeah. That all heat regulation stuff doesn't really have any real world implications because we all live in air conditioning now, but it does make the body shape differently. And bodybuilding does definitely, in some cases, reward having more muscular limbs than it does torsos. Yeah. Specifically with like, you ever seen motherfuckers with like really long torsos and really short limbs and they're hitting that front double and you're like, yeah, you got an extra set of abs or some shit. You know, if we could crunch you down, it'd look better and their legs can't really ever get that big because there's just not enough femur length to put big quads on. But on the other hand, if you're of African ancestry and of course tons of genetic variation between, the probability that you look more Ronnie Coleman-like. Because if you think about it, Ronnie Coleman's like sitting height, like the length of his torso is not so impressive. Yeah. We've got pretty fucking long arms and pretty long legs for, for his That's, height. Yeah. And you can slap a crap load of beef onto that. Another thing is that people of heat adapted climates, African descent, have muscles, uh, parts of their body that are more externally spherical because uh, with the sphere shape, you can dissipate more heat. Um, if you have bubble muscles and you're in the cold, you're gonna freeze to death. Yeah. If you have bubble muscles and you're in the heat, 
the muscles can still function without overheating as much. That doesn't have dick to do with aesthetics directly, but it's a different look. Yeah. And if you have bubble muscles that are really good at dissipating heat, they look sweet aesthetically. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, like, you know, the black guy look, like just like round everything, like yeah. that's genetic and that's related to heat adaptation. So just on those two things alone, limb proportions and on the bubbliness of muscles, you all of a sudden have a pretty distinct African advantage. And well, I kind of explained 90% of what you see in a bodybuilding stage. Cause like, <laughs> yeah, if there's a black dude in your class, you're probably taking second. That's how I feel about it. So there's the uh, theory that, um, and most people have heard it, that, you know, black people have thicker skin. It's harder for them to get that, you know, transparent dick skin, so like someone like yourself or, you saw that Branch Warren shit. The Branch Warren that Dennis guy shit. and the, in Ian Valere, you know what I mean? I don't really, I don't know. Yeah. I, I heard him like, ah, oh, there's, there's, I don't really know if that's a true, uh, but like, what, uh, is there any merit to I don't, that? I don't, I saw a couple things. I don't know for sure. I speculate, hmm, there you go, speculation. There you go. I'm speculating that that's not the case. As a matter of fact, I would speculate that's the opposite of the case. The utility of having thicker skin, which is to say a large propensity to deposit body fat underneath the skin yeah. for northern adaptive populations is quite high because like you want the fat there protecting your dumbass from freezing to death. Yeah. But if you are more heat adapted, you might not be prone to storing, first of all, as much body fat because here's another consideration. Heat adapted populations generally live in climates in which food, though maybe not highly available, is more consistently available. But if you are a cold adapted for generations and generations of thousands of years, there is a time when it's warmer when there's hella food and there's the winter when there's not much food. Yeah. And your ability to eat a crap load when there's a lot of food, store a bunch of fat, keep that fat on you, and not lose all of it because you would die in the end of winter, that is highly selected evolutionarily. So I think that there is much more of a selective pressure for folks of African descent to have less subcutaneous body fat, less body fat under the skin, and in some cases, maybe even store less body fat overall. So I actually think that gives people of African ancestry a distinct advantage in bodybuilding. Yeah. Um, and that whole thing about like the dick skin thing, I honestly think that's mostly skin tone because like if you're pale skinned enough, you get them little blue veins everywhere. It's a fucking look, man. It's a trippy look. Yeah. But if you're dark skinned, I don't even can't see your veins. I can see your shape veins. Yeah. Like where you don't basically have any veins at all. Anyway, you got that Jay Cutler look. I have veins. Yeah. 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 You're doing great. There they are. Hey guys, before we keep going, I just want to know how your workout's been. If you're watching my channel, guys, you're probably here because you want to build muscle. Well, let's give yourself a little bit of help. Use my code Johnny10 for 10% off now for your next order of Createtech. Yes, it's creatine. It's going to help you build muscle and build muscle quick. So guys, use my code Johnny10 for 10% off now for your next order of Createtech. Okay, back to the show. It's a different look. Uh, but I'll tell you this, like anyone who thinks that black people have trouble getting leaner are really, really freaky shredded. I don't know, man. Look at all the black competitors. They don't seem like they have a problem with that. Sean Clarita done run out of body fat in 2009 or some shit, never gained it back. Yeah. Now that's just one person, but I don't make the observation in general that black guys have trouble getting into shape any more than white dudes do. Yeah. Um, I will say just from cursory observations, Asians get hella lean and I don't know why, but Asians yeah. get ripped, bro. Yep, and they don't really, also obesity rates are very low in the Asian populations yes. relative to the rest of us. Yeah. And that means that they probably, if they want a bodybuild, they often start from a much lower body fat set point. And that's very convenient. Now that's true for a bunch of individuals in all the races, but the probability that you'll have like a real husky, sort of thicker white guy or thicker black guy, you know, like a, like a, like a D lineman look for a black dude yeah. with some titties and shit. Yeah. You're like, he's an athlete, but that really going to be bodybuilding anytime yeah. soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many Asians, you know, like that, like most of them, like they're pretty fucking lean to begin with. Yeah, and yeah. that's a big advantage. Another thing that comes to mind, this is quite common. This is low hanging fruit, but uh, especially in West African populations, almost all African Americans, African Canadians are West African in origin. And uh, they have relatively small calf muscles and the tendon makes up more of the shin length than the muscle than in Caucasian populations and by a long shot than in Asians. Cause like an Asian with amazing calves is just like the lady who was fucking walking down the street. There's some Chinese lady serving you fucking Chinese food that has like diamond calves and you're like, what the fuck? how? Yeah. They just got it. But that long tendon is designed to be springier than your muscles would be. And thus, 
uh, people of African ancestry on average tend to excel in sprinting and in jumping, which because they get a crap load of rebound energy from each hop. Um, that's dope for sports sports. Yeah. Um, but for bodybuilding, if you're black and your calves are small, and they're small not because they're skinny, but they're small because you look at your muscle and it's mostly tendon and a tiny bit yeah, of muscle. Yeah. If you grow your calves as big as possible, they're still going to be bunched up towards the top and they're never going to look that impressive. Yeah. So there's a, like a, a thing like about calves where you, calves are really genetic and that's not entirely wrong. So if you have really small calves and you happen to be a West African origin, you got to do your best, but you better start early and you, yeah. better, you better hammer them shits because you will be giving, you'll be getting no gifts. On the other hand, Asians on average, you look at an Asian's calves, if they're a bodybuilder, yeah. uh, small calves on an Asian are almost unheard of. And yeah. some of them have just straight up freaky calves. Yeah. Um, another thing I've personally observed with Asian bodybuilders, the size of their gluteus maximus muscles tends to be smaller than the other two races. Um, nobody's talking shit about black booty size. That's yeah. the standard right uh, there. Yeah. Ronnie Coleman, 2003, Jesus. his glutes had glutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but with Asians, sometimes the glutes just aren't very large, which I just don't think it's a big deal aesthetically. I don't think most judges really give a shit. Uh, they don't care how big it no. is because no. Asians get them striated glutes like everybody else. Mm. But there is a, a difference in size there. Say another thing is because of that, uh, muscles tend to want to dissipate more heat. They're kind of they're more bubbly and more distal on the limb, yeah. more lower down. You'll get a higher probability if you're African that your triceps have that Kevin Lavrone hang and your biceps sit further down and bubbly yeah. versus if you're Asian at the other extreme, your muscles are more bunched towards your core. So even if you're really jacked, you throw that front double up, the bicep kind of sits low and is flush. Yeah. The tricep sits back here and is more flush. Overall, you look it's same size muscular arm, but there's just more pop with, with African athletes. Yeah. So that's some of the stuff that comes to mind right offhand. And I guess like one of the things people may ask about this is like, okay, that was fun. Thanks, Neil deGrasse, for that fucking science tour. <laughs> what do I do about it? And the answer is, you know, with current technology, either way, you just do your best. Yeah. And, uh, you know, most of the people I looked up to in bodybuilding when I was coming up were black dudes because yeah. they're the best and because I love their physiques. So a lot of people are like, well, like, if I don't have black guy genetics, I shouldn't look up to black people. And it's like, you're not going to look like Branch Warren either, motherfucker. Yeah. You're not going to look like Sebum. You're only ever going to look like a better version of yourself. Yeah. So for me, when I pick my heroes, I don't look at race. I got all, all the major races. I have my bodybuilding heroes no matter what. Like, one of my favorite looks of all time is like Kevin Lavron. Yeah. He's black or at least half or some shit. Yeah. Uh, Flex Wheeler. Yeah. His 1993 Arnold Classic or whatever, I think it's like a revolution. Yeah. This is like, that's what the statue looks like when they give you the trophy. That's yeah. what that's supposed to look like. He's black. It doesn't bother me at all in the sense of like, I'm not like, well, if I can't achieve that, like, well, I can't achieve that anyway. It doesn't matter. Well, yeah. most, all, all black people exclusively, unless you're flex wheeler, can't achieve that anyway. No. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, can you imagine just telling some, a young black kid, be like, hey, listen, you could be like this. Be like, don't tell him that shit. <laughs> Next, you'll be like Jordan and LeBron. Get out of here. <laughs> Yeah. So at the end of the day, like it's fun to talk about racial differences and it's cool to see it on stage because it's noticeable, right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, you just have to do the best with what you have yeah. and there's no reason to fret or worry about it uh, or really even dig into it a ton. It's interesting, just like geeking out, but it's like if you, if you don't have a car and you like le learn about cars, uh, you can learn about all of them and have fun. At the end of the day, you, you go to sleep in your fucking car-shaped bed at home. You don't have a car. It doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> so if you, you, all you have is your body. You don't have anybody yeah. else's body. You know, like people... Why am I saying that? Because I think a lot of people, not to switch topics entirely, but this is kind of part of it, is people like to have their heroes and their idols they look up to. But at some point, they try to like look as much like their idols as possible. Yeah. But I think it's a huge misinterpretation Massive. of how things are supposed to go. Yeah. You're just trying to become the best version of yourself. Yeah. I look at Keon's physique, Keon Prodigy. Uh, what's his, Keon, Keon Pearson? Yeah. And I like, I'm like, this is the greatest physique of all time. I legitimately believe this is the greatest physique of all time. Yeah. It's the most beautiful physique I've ever seen. I'm not going to look like Keon, yeah. but I can still look at his physique as a piece of art and be inspired. Yes. Uh, uh, exactly. I'm just, uh, a lot of folks out there are like, the last question is like, what, what do I do to get that C-bum look? Like, become more muscular and more lean yeah. and try to work on your upper body a lot. That's it. Yeah. And like, what about more specifics? Like, well, there are no more specifics. The rest is up to your genetics. Yeah. I think it's like, because that's going to bring us kind of talk, but I think it's the thing is looking at, you know, like yourself, not, you're not really like Keon Pearson ever. Right, but you can look at him as inspiration, like that motivates you to want to be the best you. They lose in that 
and look, want to look like they're, you know, they're idle. Yeah. The same way that someone looks at, say, like, and I'll go into that Natty Knot thing, like, that person's on steroids, and now I know that uh, what I can achieve because he's now told the truth. It's like, well, no, you, you don't can't. have to look at them as more for, like, inspiration. Yes. It doesn't mean, like, you know, whatever they're doing doesn't matter. It's like, if that's going to make fuel you to yeah. want to work your ass off, yeah. great, but it shouldn't fuel you to want to look like that. Yeah. And that's where people get lost. Yeah. And also, you can take inspiration from their physique component-wise. Yes. So you can say, like, I love looking at a picture of Keon Pearson, and then go into the bathroom and just, you know what I'm saying? Oh, wait, sorry, wrong video. <laughs> so when I look at Keon, what I get from that is like, first of all, just art, like appreciation. You know, I don't look at fucking Leonardo da Vinci shit and like, I'm going to paint the fucking Mona Lisa or something. Yeah. I'm like, nah. <laughs> yeah. But it's beautiful. Yeah. But I'm like, I'm good. Keon's shit, I look at his physique and I'm like, I want a smaller waist. Not like his, because his is nuts. Yeah. But his tiny waist inspires me to bring the smallest waist I can. So yes. I diet harder or some shit, or diet longer, diet yeah. smarter, yeah. diet more consistently. Yeah. I want bigger arms. His shit is comical. Mine isn't. But I want just mine a little bit bigger. So yeah. I can so I can sniff that Keon air just a little bit more. Like I'm not trying to climb Mount Everest. Yeah. But if I'm climbing uphill hiking and this little top's pretty far away, I'm thinking Everest kinda like to motivate my ass. Yeah. I don't want to get all the way to the top. I can't. I'm not in that kind of shape. But on my way to climbing my own hill, I can feel inspired yeah. to be just a little bit more like crazy Mount Everest. Climbers, who are always white dudes anyway, because they're nuts. There was a first uh, black, a group of all black that one the other day, haha, <laughs> and faster. Of course, faster. I don't know if it was faster or not, but I assume it they was. They actually just jumped. Jumped to the they mountain jumped. straight. They're like, they didn't climb. Yeah. They were just jumping. It. Yeah, Dragon Ball Z style. Just it. Dope. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, who who are you looking up to when you were coming up in bodybuilding? So I so I would pick people that I kind of looked like. Yeah. Okay. Right. So and. So, so you were um, just straight racist about the shit. You straight up, straight up. And then I, like Johnny Jackson was one of the first guys because like first of all he had the same name as me. Yeah. And then he had massive traps. The biggest. Yeah. And so I was, so, and I had traps when I was younger. Uh -huh. So I would be in the gym, arms and traps training. Yeah. And doing, you know, um, he was one. Um, when Will Bonat came in the scene, I favored his physique a lot because we kind of very similar to physique, but he was a little more. He's a little more thicker than I am at the bottom. He's, so a little more streamlined in the waist size. Like, but like thickness, like we're good friends too, but like just seeing him like in person, being the same height, relative same height and whatnot, that, you know, guys like that motivated me. Mm -hmm. I never looked for any, anyone who didn't look kind of like what I could, not necessarily what I could achieve, but like that looks similar to what I sure. had. But you're a pro, so it's different for you. Yeah. You actually had a real shot of looking like these motherfuckers. The rest of us might not. See, I didn't know that at the time though. Okay. So for for me, it was never like like my best friend was. Yeah, he had a he's a forty six inch vert, ran a four two nine, went to Syracuse. My other buddy played it. You know, um, these are black folks. Yeah, they're all friends, right? Oh, and they all were like better than me. I was I was you know I always shine in the work ethic and I was strong. Yeah. Then I was like, if you put all of us in one group, I was fast average for them. Yeah. Maybe fast for everyone else, yeah. but in that group I wasn't the fastest. Right. But outside the group, I'm really fast. Sure. So I really know any of that until like literally until like recently, until like coming off of steroids and everything else. Then yeah. being like, holy shit! Like I'm still, still jacked. Look like this and not really doing much to achieve this. And yeah. Like, um, if I come off steroids, I'll just disappear straight up. That's what Steve said. I, mean, I saw him. He's like, I came off. I don't look like you, man. I'm like, oh. you got to change that skin tone, big homie. You're welcome. Yeah. Anyway. Hopefully that was useful to some people. Let's really see if this can it gets canceled. It will get canceled the first one. Damn it. <laughs> I don't know if I left my door open. Is your dog gonna eat my kid's mini mouse? Yeah. You want me to go up? I can go up. I got it. You sure? Yeah, I can use a step.